Hi, and welcome to Yoga for Spinal Mobility. Now, these are great exercises just for all around improvement of your spinal mobility, how you can move your spine and your flexibility. But if you have back pain, these are also great exercises that could help to restore you to back health. Now, we all go through days where the back goes out and we feel like, oh, just I'm wrecked. And the common, what used to be prescribed was this idea of rice, right? Rest, ice, compression, elevation, whenever something went out. But it's being revised to the new model of meat, which the foundation is movement and exercise. So it's starting to restore movement as quickly as possible. And the movement itself helps to heal. So I've been playing with in my own practice when stuff goes out, when I tweak myself surfing or something, instead of doing full rest for a few days, I'll start to integrate mild movement. And as a result, I feel a lot better. So I wanted to give you this video just so that you have it in your arsenal. It's something that you can pull out, you can come back to. If you do have back issues, it might be something that you integrate more regularly. All right, let's get started with this class. So for this first breathing exercise, you may want to have a pillow underneath your head, especially if your neck is tight. And you're going to lie down with your feet up on the wall, with the legs at a 90 degree angle from the shin to the thigh, and then a 90 degree angle from your thigh to your torso. <clears throat> Have about a fist and a half in between your knees. And then with your feet in this position, bring your hands to your ribs. And as you exhale, blow the air out through your mouth gently. Send it all out like you're blowing up a balloon. Pause at the end. Let the tip of your tongue touch the roof of your mouth. Breathe in through your nose real silently. Feel your ribs expand. And then breathe out through your mouth again like you're blowing up a balloon. At the very end, can you feel your side abs turn on? Keep the memory of that as you breathe in again. And notice how naturally your rib cage will expand. You'll get a diaphragmatic breath. At the top of the in-breath, make sure you haven't strained your neck, your jaw, your shoulders at all. And then blow all that out again. Now, with your heels, gently pull down towards the ground. Like you're trying to pull the wall down. Don't push into it. Just gently pull down and reach the knees straight up. As the knees reach up, you'll feel a little bit of activity in your hamstrings. Especially bring your brain into your left heel and your left hamstring. We tend to be more right-sided, so bringing more awareness into the left side will help to bring balance. Keep the breath going like we practice. Blow all there out. Keep your neck and your jaw relaxed. Feel the obliques hold a little bit as you breathe in. Notice how much more expansion you get up here. And then let that all relax. Roll over to your side and come onto your hands and your knees. Now you might already feel a little bit more decompression and space from that little exercise. Now on your hands and your knees, we're going to do some mobilization for the spine. So we're going to try to move the spine segmentally. The better that you can move the joints of your spine, the more healthy it will be. So start by tucking your buttocks under and then imagine your lower back rounding up, your middle back, your upper back, round your neck, look back towards your belly. And then go the other way, flip your sit bones up, let your lower back drop towards the floor, your middle, your upper back, 
and your neck. Look up. In reverse. Tuck the buttocks. And then one vertebra at a time, start to roll up as best you can. Go the other way. One more round. As you exhale, round through your spine. As you inhale, flip into extension. Now come to neutral. And just like when you're on the wall, let's blow all there out. Feel the obliques turn on. Now press through your shoulder blades to push the floor away from you. Feel your collarbones broad. Keep that feeling as you breathe in and blow out. Breathe in. And blow out. If the breath is moving well, you might start to feel it in your middle upper back expanding. And that's really good because that area gets really tight. The pressure there puts pressure on your lumbar and your neck. Now from here, let's stretch into child's pose. So keeping your toes curled under, reach your hips back towards your heels. As you inhale, come forward again. And as you exhale, stretch your hips back. One more time, inhale, come forward again. And exhale, stretch back. Hold in the child stretch. If you wanna go deeper, you can point the toes back and sit the hips back deeper. As long as it's not too much on your knees or your ankles. Then inhale, come back up. And now we're gonna to transition to lying on the back. Back onto your back. Let your shoulders relax and your hips relax. Gently bring your left knee in towards your chest and then slide your right heel out along the ground. Let your inner thigh drop down, point the big toe up towards the sky and press through your foot. Then slide that leg back along the ground, change legs. Gently hug your right knee in as you slide your left heel out. Press through the leg, point the big toe up, let the inner thigh start to drop down as your leg stretches. Slide your heel back towards you and change legs. Now, as you go to stretch the right leg out, let's add the left arm. Stretch your left arm up into the air, slowly reach it back. Slide your heel and your arm back up. Change sides. Hug the right knee in as you slide the left leg out and reach the right arm back. So as you go to take your right arm back, see if you can integrate the awareness of what we practiced at the wall. So that as your arm reaches back, you can keep some of the ribcage awareness. By creating a better connection from a ribcage to our pelvis, we're helping to improve the health of the diaphragm which is going to affect the pull on all the tissues in your body. Come back up and change sides. So the diaphragm, that's a muscle that's moving all day and change sides. And as you get a healthier diaphragm, the muscle of the lower back can get taught to relax. And just by improving our general mobility, that's gonna help the hips and the shoulders, if the hips and the shoulders can move with more freedom, respective to keeping this ribcage pelvis connection, it's gonna help for the back to release over time. 
So the more often you do these exercises, the easier they'll get, that, that they'll get, that your body will be able to move with more freedom and the back will start to release. Good, now finish that out. Just open your arms out to the side and let your knees like windshield wipers swivel over to the right as you look to your left. And then swivel the knees to the left as you look to your right. Change sides, knees to the right as you look to your left. And change sides. Bring your knees back to center. Gently hug your knees into your chest. Then set your feet down and roll over. Now that we finished the warm up, let's hold a few stretches. So the first stretch that we're gonna do is on the belly, a full body stretch. Stretch back to your toes, stretch your arms forward. And as you press the tops of the feet down, press your hands down. Now, instead of letting your bottom rib cage sink into the ground, let's create some of the awareness that we had at the wall. Gently move your buttocks towards the backs of your knees, engage the hamstrings. Tip the bottom of the front ribs towards your hips and the bottom back ribs away like you're wheeling the rib cage, front rib cage down, back rib cage forward. And as you do that, stretch through your arms. Practice slow, steady breathing in and out through your nose. If you don't feel a lot of stretch in your armpits or your legs in this position, you can make it more challenging by curling the toes under. That changes the angle of the femur in relation to the pelvis, it takes it a bit into extension, and you can lift up onto the fingertips, which also takes the upper arm into deep reflection. Whichever variation you're holding, we have 30 more seconds. Slow, steady breathing. Now make sure that your rib cage didn't tip down, wheel the opposite way that we were trying to, if you went deeper. Make sure that your buttocks didn't creep into your lower back. Keep reaching the buttocks out of the lower back and reach the back ribs away from the buttocks. Nose can gently rest on the ground. And release. All right, let's try another stretch now. So for this stretch, we're gonna get into the psoas and the QL. So we're gonna come into a lunge position. You can go to a wall for more stability, but let's wiggle the right foot over to the right a little bit. Keep your left knee right underneath your hip. You can curl the toes under to get a little bit more buttock releasing down action if it helps you. With the buttock releasing down, front ribs down, raise your left arm up. Then to increase the stretch, we're gonna add a side bend. If it feels like too much stretch, don't go all the way over to the wall. You can hold somewhere upright, leaned over slightly, or all the way against the wall, depending on your flexibility. And we're just holding for one minute. Breathe slow in and out through your nose, focusing on longer exhalations. If it helps you to add a little bit of the mouth exhalation to find the rib cage positioning and the pelvis positioning again, remember we wanna go back to that in all these stretches. Come back up. 
and it should feel like you got a real nice deep release on that side. Change sides now. Right knee right underneath the hip, left foot wiggles to the left a little bit. Take your arm up. Now, no two side is the same, so just observe. Is this enough stretch on this side? Do I need to angle over some? Or would I benefit from going all the way? It might take a few times practicing this video before you feel comfortable going all the way into the full stretch. Last 10 seconds. And come back up. And just notice how relaxed your body feels on that side, more balanced. Now we're gonna try a variation of downward facing dog, which is much more therapeutic for the back. So eventually, the basic yoga postures are therapeutic and healing in themselves. But if our body lacks the strength and mobility to be able to go into those poses with ease, confidently, and with good alignment, then we can end up causing more harm than good. So we're gonna try this modified version of downward facing dog or puppy dog stretch. Let's place the hands right at waist height at the wall and then walk the feet away from the wall. As you reach from your hands with your fingers angled out a little bit, as you reach through your shoulders to your hands, as you exhale, let's do one of those open mouth exhalations like you're blowing up the balloon to reconnect the rib cage to the pelvis. Now, depending on how tight your shoulders are, you might be able to sink your head between your arms and stretch back deeper, or you might be somewhere right here, keeping the ribcage pelvis connection. What I don't want you to do is to sink into the lumbar in order to go deeper. Instead, keep the connection there, keep length through the lumbar spine as you stretch the hips back, stretch the arms and the legs. Look down at your feet, open up your toes, open up the soles of the feet and reach down through the heels, the big toe mounds and the little toe mounds. 30 more seconds here in the stretch. Slow, steady breathing in and out through your nose. So that calm breathing helps to teach the nervous system, helps to teach the body to stay calm in the stretch to receive more benefit so that you're not fighting back. In the stretch, on a scale of one to 10, you wanna be right at a five. Not too much sensation, not too little. If you try to go past the five, your body will re respond by creating more tension. So we don't wanna do that. and slowly release. <clears throat> so I hope you feel good after trying that video with me. I'm gonna put uh, another video that is a link to my beginner's course. After you feel confident with this back hair series, you can try my beginner's course. And I'm gonna put also another video to strengthening the hips and the legs. So as your hips and your legs and your core get healthier, it's gonna help 
your body to hold this position. So by improving our mobility and our strength, that's going to help to bulletproof the back over time. So I hope that you'll stick with this video. And as you feel more confident, try the other ones too. All right. Leave a comment or a question below if you have any, and I'll see you next time on your mat. Have a great day.